สวัสดีอาจารย์แล้วก็คุณหมอทุกท่านค่ะวันนี้นะคะก็เป็นเกตอย่างยิ่งนะคะที่เราได้มีโอได้มีโอกาสได้มาเจอกันนะคะแล้วก็วันนี้เราเราได้รับเกียรติจากเรเชลพิโนนะคะรับเตอร์เรเชลพิโน Head of Auto Customer Success and Clinical จากฝั่ง APAC นะคะที่จะวันนี้มาแชร์อัปเดตนะคะสำหรับตัวโปรแกรมที่ไว้สำหรับดู Treatment Setup ของตัวเคลคนะคะที่ชื่อเรียกว่าเคลียร์พายโลดนะคะตอนนี้เรา Launch เวอร์ชัน5แล้วนะคะนั่นเนี่ยเดี๋ยววันนี้เรามาดูกันว่ามันมีอะไรอัปเดตบ้างแล้วก็แต่ละทูสแต่ละฟีเจอร์ที่ลอนช์ออกมาเนี่ยทำต้องใช้งานยังไงบ้างแล้วก็จะช่วยในเรื่องของทีมเมสเซจอัพได้ดีขึ้นยังไงนะคะงั้นเดี๋ยวบีส่งต่อให้กับเรเชลเลยนะคะดรเรเชลแอนทันโอเวอร์จี Thank you so much, A. Welcome, doctors from Thailand. It's a pleasure to be online with you today. We're going to talk about ClearPilot 5.0. So please let me um, share my screen. Just give me one minute. Abby, you can stop sharing your screen when you get the chance. Okay, yeah. Yes. Okay, we can see your screen. Yes. Okay. So just one minute while my presentation loads. Um, all of you in Thailand will now have access to the latest version of ClearPilot 5.0. Any case that you upload from now will um, have access to the 5.0 features, and any case that you do a revision for will also have access to the features. My computer is a little slow this morning. Just give it a couple of minutes for me. And in the meanwhile, um, thank you all so much for joining. I think you should be able to see my screen now, right, B? Yes. Great. Okay, so as B mentioned, um, my name is Dr. Rachel Pino. I'm from Australia, um, and I'm the head of clinical orthodontics for the Stroman Group Clear Correct. Today, we're going to take you on a webinar journey for about um, an hour, maybe a little bit less, depending on how many questions and answers we do. Um, if you have a question, don't hesitate to type in the chat box. I can read that on the side of my screen here. If you have any questions, just type and I will do my best to answer straight away. We'll also have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So this is a very exciting launch because our features with ClearCorrect are becoming more and more advanced, giving you the opportunity to do more advanced treatment planning for your patients. If you haven't met me before online, this is who I am. I'm a GP doctor from Australia. Um, I've been doing orthodontics for some time, um, and I was living in Singapore for about four to five years. But I recently moved back to Australia, and I've been with the Stroman Group for more than three years as head of clinical orthodontics for Asia Pacific. So let's talk about Clear Pilot. I don't want to talk about myself today. So um, we have some major upgrades. Um, if you've been using our system since we launched in Thailand last year, you will have realized that we have um, innovated our product significantly. Um, so we have a completely 3D visual, uh, visual interface for you. So you can do all of your treatment planning and customization online. Our software ClearPilot is completely web-based, so you don't need to download any um, software onto your computer. And because it's web-based, you can use your PC computer, you can use a MacBook, even your iPhone or iPad, there's no problem there. You can review your case um, online as long as you have access to the internet. As we have advanced our ClearPilot Clear software, we're at version 5.0. Uh, we have been giving you more and more improvements as we heard a lot of feedback from doctors that you want to be able to control the tooth movements yourself. So you have more and more tools with this update and I will show you in a live demo how you can use these tools yourself for editing your patient's treatment plan. And we also have some other updates. Um, we heard a lot of feedback that you would like to hear and see more about tools such as Bolton's analysis, the tooth movement chart, and even the collision management. If you move a tooth and it um, impacts right up next to the next one, the system will automatically input the IPR for you so you don't have to go backwards and forwards with the technicians as often. 
We have the features such as the grid. So you can use the grid to measure the um, distance that the teeth are moving, although it's all in the tooth movement chart, but you can also use the grid if you find that helpful. We have multi-view, uh, which is where you can play the video and you can see the teeth moving in different views, such as occlusal, anterior, left or right buccal view. We can also superimpose, so you can see the start position versus the proposed final position, and also measure the occlusal contacts if they're heavy, medium or light with our ClearPilot software. So our latest feature allows you to move a tooth and use the arrows for the toggling of the tooth. Um, this will allow for you to move the tooth to the final position so you don't have to type to the technicians and communicate backwards and forwards as much. You can also add engages, cutouts, bite ramps and pontics directly to the setup. So you can modify this yourself without having to ask the technician. Bolton's analysis um, does a measurement uh, mesial to distal, and it tells you if there's any excess in the upper or the lower arch, and that will help you know if you need to um, perhaps incorporate some IPR to get to your final result um, to have the most ideal overjet and overbite situation. We also still have the comments section, so some of you probably would prefer not to use the 3D controls and you're happy just typing to the technician so you can still use that as normal. Of course, you have all of the documents where you upload your photographs, your radiographs, and you can still check this along with the tooth movement chart, which will tell you exactly how much the teeth are moving at every stage of the treatment plan. So ClearPilot was built to be flexible. That's why you don't have to download any software onto your computer. It's completely web-based. We also have a mobile phone and tablet version as well. So it's optimized for looking at on a tablet to make it easier for you. Okay, so we use the 3D movements and we call this the Compass Multi-Tooth Editing System. I will show you how that looks. Um, basically, you're given um, a lot of opportunity to move the teeth in different planes of occlusion to get to the final result that you're looking for. Collision management, as I mentioned previously, was something that wasn't available in ClearPilot 4.0. So this um, will automatically add in IPR if you move the tooth up um, against the adjacent tooth. So if you're doing distalization, as an example, and you don't have enough space to distalize the tooth, the system will automatically add in IPR. Likewise, if you move a space um, away from a tooth, it will let you know that um, space is opened in a particular segment. We have all of the features as before. So everything that you are using in ClearPilot 4.0 is still there and you can just see added features, which I will explain to you today. So I won't spend too long looking at this slide. We'll go through it in the live demo shortly. Okay. So I just want to show you that the mobile view and the tablet view is very intuitive because if we just replicated the exact view of the web based onto the tablet, you would find that it would be very difficult to see everything. That's why we have a web based version where we've streamlined the interface to make it more visually um, and easier to access all of the information that you're looking for. So in the mobile view, you can still um, review the case, but if you want to use the 3D analysis and move the teeth in the 3D movements, you will need to use the desktop version um, on your PC or on your laptop so that you can, in fact, do the motions properly um, on the biggest screen. So this is the timeline. When we started ClearPilot was October 2020. We started with ClearPilot 1.0. Um, and it was very basic. So the doctors could only really just play the video. We could see the tooth movement chart, but we were really unable to make any edits ourselves. But then in April, 2021, we released ClearPilot 2.0, where we added the multi-view feature and the occlusal heat map. The occlusal heat map is really great if you're looking to see if there are any occlusal interferences during the treatment plan or how the um, contacts are at the end of the treatment plan. 
Earlier this year, in January 2022, we released Clear Pilot 3.0. That's when you were able to start moving the teeth um, on your own. You didn't have to just ask the technician. So we uh, released individual tooth movements in 2022, um, earlier this year. We allowed you to have different sizes of engages. So our standardized um, sizing is three millimeters. You can now ask for two millimeters or also four millimeters if you would like something larger. Doctors are also able to look at the occlusal heat map and access all of the information like the prescription and the photographs and the radiographs right from the doctor portal. Um, in September, this is when we really ramped things up with Clear Pilot 4.0. So we allowed the doctors to move engages, to move cutouts, and also add in bite ramps directly um, within the Clear Pilot software. We also allowed other features um, like zooming in infinitely, <laughs> color setting preferences, and overcorrection identification right within the Clear Pilot. And just from September to October, we have had a very quick update. So you can see how quickly Strawman is moving and advancing through our technological um, improvements. So just within a month, we have Clear Pilot 5.0, and this um, allows us to do much deeper analysis of the orthodontic situation of your patients with Clear Pilot Bolton's analysis tables and charts the tooth movement assessment table, and also the collision um, movement. Uh, and with the editing enhancements, you can move multiple teeth at once. You can use the compass tooth editing tool and also the multi-tooth multi editing feature. Okay, so we will just jump right ahead and we will look at Clear Pilot 5.0. So this is what we have today. And if you submit a case to your doctor portal, your new case will come back with all of these features and all of the previous features that I mentioned. Um, and if you have an existing case, you will need to make a revision on that case before you can access the full suite of the tools, okay? So we really are focused on the digital ecosystem. Uh, that's why we prefer for our doctors to submit cases with intraoral scanners because the outcome is much simpler and more accurate for the patients and also for you as a doctor with your digital treatment planning. Clear Pilot is our intuitive online doctor portal where you can access all of your cases and review the software in our comprehensive system. And coming soon in some markets, we also have dental monitoring which um, is the feature to let you do the remote monitoring of your patients via their mobile phones so that you can reduce the amount of time that you have to see them in the dental chat. So let's just um, jump over to the live demo. So please give me one second to share my screen. And B, could you let me know when you can see the web browser, which is the doctor portal? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, so I would just like to go back one step. So this is the Clear Correct Doctors homepage. So here you can see all of the cases that have been uploaded. This is just a demo account. Please keep in mind that this is not 100% accurate because these cases are just fake cases for the purposes of training and education. Um, and I would just like to show you some of the features that are available in the doctor portal as a refresher. So remember that if you want to add a new case, you will click add order and that will allow you to do a new prescription form. If you have a patient that um, has finished clear correct or finished another type of um, orthodontic treatment, you can also order retainers for them by clicking the add retainer button. And then as we scroll down, we can see all of the cases. Um, and this is the demo case here that I want to look at today. Um, and you will see on the left-hand side, there is a column that says order number. So this is the unique patient number that's allocated to your case. If you have any issues with your case, please just quote the order number or the patient ID to your customer support team, and we can follow up with that. The middle column is for the patient's name. And then we have information about the status of the case. If you still need to upload more information, if you need to review the treatment plan or if you have approved it. The category is if you need to do some actions, if something's waiting from your side, um, or if the case type is 
approved. So if you pick the unlimited, the three, the two, the one, the flex package, and so forth. So let's click on this case here, um, case number 1100443. And when I click on this, um, it's going to open the case profile for that patient. Um, and we can see that this um, patient here is a demo case. So this is just for the purpose of training and education. And then when we click on this button here, um, this is going to open Clear Pilot 5.0. Okay, you don't need to do anything extra to your system. It will automatically upload with the latest software. Okay. And just make sure that you always have internet access when you open the case. Okay, um, because we need to make sure that you're online, particularly when you're doing any editing. Um, if you're not online, the case won't open. And if you make some changes and you're not online, then the changes won't save. Okay, so this is the case that has opened. So we can see that this is a class two um, case. It's an adult patient with a deep bite. Okay, and we'll just do a quick refresher of all of the features on Clear Pilot. Um, so if we look here on the right-hand side, there's information where we can review the photographs. So here um, with the photographs, we can see all of the images that were taken by the doctor of the patient. We can review the case file. If you click on this button, it will download the initial um, PDF of the prescription form that you uploaded to click correct. And the x-rays will show the LATSEP and the OPG if you uploaded these to the system. If you want to make it bigger, you can just simply click on it. And you can zoom right in and you can see the images. And if you had multiple x-rays, you could click the right and the left button and you could scroll through. Okay, so then under comments, um, we can see the initial instructions that, um, let's pretend this is my case that I, the doctor, had uploaded. So we can see that this is the information here. And then the technician has come back and they have given us version one on the 28th of October. Okay, so if we zoom in slightly, um, we can then see the treatment overview, which is in the top right hand side. And if we look at this, this is a summary of the case. So this is telling us a lot of information about this click correct case. So we can see that it is 20 steps, and that's correct because if we look down here at the um, scroll bar, we can see that in fact it goes to step number 20. And then R is for the retainer. Okay, so R indicates the end step. So um, the system has um, asked me when I did the prescription form, how often will my patient change the aligner? And I indicated one week. So that means that the system has estimated that with 20 steps and one week where change, the treatment should finish within about five months. So that's very helpful when I'm talking to my patient. I can just tell them this treatment plan should take about five months. If we do a revision, it will take longer. Then there is information to say at each step exactly what needs to be done. So at the start, at the very beginning of the treatment, um, we need to do some IPR. And if we just play that, it will tell us um, where the IPR needs to be done. So at step number three, it needs to be done Right here where we can see um, this little bar, we need to do 0 0.3 millimeters uh, between the 2-1 and the 1-1. One, one. And at the same step, at step number three, we also need to place all of these engages, which are the green images here that you are seeing. So at step number three, you will see the patient, you will use the engager template, you will place the composite in the template and bond the engager template to the teeth to have the attachments bonded. And at the same time, the doctor will also do 0 0.3 millimeters of IPR at that step. Then we can see that the next um, appointment will need to be around step number 11 for treatment, because by step number 11, we have to then do some more IPR. Uh, that needs to be done between um, the 2-3 and, sorry, the 2-1 and the 2-2. Two, two, and the doctor also needs to place some additional engages at this step. And then right at the final step at the retainer, we can see here the instruction is to remove all of the engages. And this is how it looks. 
And then we have the summary here in gray, the total amount of IPR that was performed for the case is 0.3 and 0.3. So that's consistent with the summary, the total amount of IPR is 0.6 millimeters and the total amount of engages for this case is 14. Okay, so that is the treatment overview. Okay, so if we just zoom out a little bit, we also have the tooth movement chart. We have a very nice update with Clear Pilot 5.0. We can now see that there's some markings above the teeth. We can see some little triangles. Some are yellow and some are red. And a red movement indicates that it is a difficult movement. And a yellow movement indicates um, that it is um, moderately difficult for the doctor. Okay. So if we scroll back to the beginning, we can see for this case that we actually have some yellows and reds on the molars. And then quite typically with this case, we can see that actually to intrude the 1-1 one, one and the 2-1, it's showing as difficult and moderate. And then here on the left-hand side, we have one that is um, red as well. So if you want more information about why this is a difficult movement, you can just hover your mouse. So I'm hovering that over the 1-6 and we can see that it is telling us that this movement is difficult because we have intrusion of 1.05 millimeters and buccal lingual translation of 1.2 millimeters. So then if we correlate this to the tooth movement chart and we look at 1-6, we can see that there is a little um, red triangle here and we can see that the difficult part of this movement is actually the one six intruding. And we know that intrusion of a molar beyond one millimeter is actually a difficult movement. So as a doctor, you need to consider if any auxiliaries are needed, maybe you need to add some engages. If it's a lot of intrusion, you might even need to add buttons and elastics or even like a tat. Okay, so this chart is really helpful now because you can see which teeth are more difficult to move and you can make a better assessment of um, deciding if your treatment plan is predictable or not. So we can see that the um, triangles stay throughout the whole treatment plan so it's very helpful when you're editing and you can also see the yellow so the yellow indicates that it is a moderate movement. If the movement is easy actually there will be no triangle above the tooth. Um, if it's simple, straightforward, you won't see a triangle. Only if it's moderate or if it's difficult, you'll see an orange or a yellow and a red triangle. Okay. So now I would like to show you the updated 3D controls. So I will just close the comments box and I will just zoom out slightly. So looking at this case, um, if I were the treating doctor for this, I can see that this patient is very class two with a very deep bite. I would actually like to distalize the upper arch. I would like to correct the patient to class one. Uh, but in this treatment plan, we can see that what the doctor has asked for is not to correct the class two malocclusion we can see that it has actually just stayed um, as it is and the deep bite has been corrected, but the finish is that we have a very large overbite. And I think that in my opinion, we should try to correct that. A new feature that we have with Clear Pilot is the Bolton's analysis. So when I click on Bolton's here on the top right-hand side, what we are now seeing is the Bolton's analysis tool um, and basically, this will give us the overview of whether there is excess in the upper or the lower arch. And that's very helpful for treatment planning so that you know um, about the overjet and the overbite situation if it was corrected to a class one. So here we have um, two options. We can see mandibular excess is present for this case. So this is saying that there's, the tooth size is actually bigger in the lower arch, and we have two different views. We have the anterior, which is from canine to canine. So the anterior analysis is just done from three to three, upper and lower arch. And the overall analysis is done, including the posterior teeth as well. 
So if we include the posterior tip, we can see that there's a significant over, um, there's a significant um, excess in the lower arch, there's nearly six millimeters. But when we look at this, we can see that one tooth is missing, which is the one three. So that what the system has done, the clear correct system has done is to insert a pontic and it's estimated the size of the pontic. So that's why we can see here that the representation is accurate. And if this patient was corrected to a class one, we could see that the overjet would still be pretty tight. Okay, so that is Bolton's analysis. Um, it will show you all of the values for the maxillary and the mandibular teeth. Um, and it will give you the option of having um, the excess in the upper and the lower, depending on the size of the teeth and the measurements. Okay. So next up, we will look at the doctor edit so we can have a better understanding of the 3D controls. So to do the 3D tooth movements, you're going to need to click on doctor edits. And we will see down here on the scroll bar that we automatically get taken to doctor. That means that we are editing the final position that the technicians have given us. So let me zoom in a little bit. And now what we can see here is that we have um, some information. So we can see here that these bits are telling us that um, there is tightness or crowding in these areas and there is open space in these areas. So if we look at the upper arch only, what we can do is we can actually um, double click on a tooth. So if we click on this one here, the one edge, we are then given um, an image which shows us different anchor points of the teeth. Okay, so let me correct this here for you. And we can see that there's different anchor points. So on the occlusal surface and on the mesial and distal surface. So if we click one of those anchor points, such as the distal surface, we then have some arrows which um, are highlighted, which allow us to move the teeth in different directions. And this is called the compass feature. Okay. So if we simply want to move that tooth in a horizontal direction, we can see that if I'm distalizing the tooth, we can see that this number here is opening up, which indicates that there is now a space of 0 0.7 millimeters. And if I continue to distalize that tooth, we can see that that space gets bigger. So this is the automatic collision tool feature. And then if I medialize this tooth all the way up to the distal of the 1.6, we can see now that the image is showing that we actually need to add in IPR. So this is the amount of IPR that I will need to do, 2.1 millimeters um, to create the space. So this is called collision management. So obviously I don't want to medialize it. I will just put it back to where it was, uh, but maybe I will choose to distalize. And let's say that I want to distalize multiple teeth. We can now do that with Clear Pilot. So I can click on the one stick, one seven, and I can say go all the way to the three by pressing shift. And then we can distalize at the same time. And if you make a mistake, just click the um, button here that says undo edit. And if you want to try again, you can click and then hold shift. And you can distalize together. And we can see that the whole segment of the teeth is distalizing. So this is really handy if you need to um, move multiple teeth at once. And we know with Clear Pilot 4.0, it was becoming challenging when you were clicking many times. It was just easier for you to type to the technician. But this time around, we can see that it's much easier to move groups of teeth at once. So if we want to move a tooth in, say, like um, an intrusion type, um, manner, we can click on the anchor point above the tooth and then we can um, double click and we can intrude and we can also extrude at the same time. So this is very helpful. Likewise, we can do multiple teeth at once and we can do this type of movement. Okay, so this is a great tool for you to be able to move multiple teeth at once and save time. I just wanted to quickly highlight that um, we can do um, editing for the features such as cutouts and engages. So here on this tooth, um, someone has edited this um, set of teeth and they have added a slit on the upper arch. So I want to go ahead and remove that. 
So what I will do is I will click on the tooth number 26 and I will click features and then I will click cutout. And actually I want to delete this cutout. And you can simply edit this um, in your own time. So if you put a button there and you want to remove it, you can remove it. And if you want to add the class two from here to the canine, you can click the button. Okay, so then this way the doctor can run the elastics in a class two direction. And here for the split, we can delete it. And likewise here, we can delete that as well. If you would like to move the button into a different direction, you can simply um, zoom in and then click on the button. And then here you have the option to put the button on the buckle or the lingual, so you can change that. But for this, I want it on the buckle because I'm running class two elastics. And then you can change the position with the up and down arrows and you can simply put it in the position that you think is best for your patient. So I think that looks pretty good. And then here for this one, I would like to put it a little bit more apically on the two. Great. Okay, and then if a movement is difficult, um, let's say that you have a lot of extrusion that you need to do or a lot of intrusion, you can simply click on the engager and you can change the size of it. So for this tooth, it's quite a big tooth and it has to intrude a lot. So I'm going to make it a four millimeter in size. And you can also um, rotate it. So it looks more aesthetic for the patient. And here I will also make it four millimeters in size. And now we can also change the depth. So we can change it to one millimeters. And if you want to move it in different directions on the tooth, you can use the arrow to change the position. Okay. And then in the lower arch, we can zoom out. And if there's any other movements that you wish to do, you can simply just touch up the rotations very easily. This is really nice for editing the final position of the teeth so you don't have to type to the technicians. But if you think that you just prefer to use the 3D controls just for very minor touch-ups, you can of course type to the technician at the same time so you can open the comments. So what I might do here is write, dear technician, Please correct final position to class one molar and canine relationship because we can see in this treatment version, um, the doctor has just corrected the deep bite, but they haven't actually um, corrected the um, molar and canine relationship. So I'm going to ask the technician to correct it to molar class one and canine relationship, but we have to tell them how. So I'm going to say, um, via sequential upper arch distalization. And then you can say um, also that you would like to have the cutouts. Cutouts have been added via 3D control. Okay, and you might also want to ask for, um, you might want to ask for the upper arch to, let's say that you don't like adding engages via the 3D controls, you just want the technicians to add it. You can say upper arch to have engages on one, six, one, seven, two, six, two, seven um, in four millimeter size. So you can see here that I'm using a combination of using the 3D edits and also typing to the technician. So you can choose whatever you prefer. You can simply type, you can do all your own edits or you can do a combination of both. Okay, so now we can see this. And if we go to the R stage, what we're seeing here is what the technician had proposed for us in this version. So we can see that they just wanted us to do some IPR and this was the final result. But then if we go to doctor, this is what I have proposed. These are the edits that I have made. And we can see that I've added in some elastic. I've added engages. I've done a lot of different things. Um, and if I'm pretty happy with that, I can save the comments and I can click submit changes. 
and the changes should take about two to three working days for you to come back and review. If you would also like to see just one more thing, um, the superimposition. So we can open the arch and we can compare. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. If we click on the R, this is the initial position. So everything that the technician did for us um, will be shown as white. You can see how the purple is the initial stage and then the teeth move into the white for the final position. And then if you see the doctor edit, you're seeing the green, which is also the movement that I have made. So we're seeing a lot of different colors now, uh, but it just shows the different types of movements that we've made um, as a superimposition. We can also see the occlusal features. So if we look um, at the version that the technicians gave us, we're seeing some green. I think you can see some green on the molars and the premolars, and then in the lower arch, um, also on the distal of the canine and the premolars and the molars. But if we look at the version that I did, um, we can see now that there's some heavy contact, there's some very red contact. So please review that before you approve it. If you're happy with that, that's fine. But if there's very heavy contact, you might want to intrude some teeth to correct the bite position because this is actually quite heavy. So it's really handy that you can use the 3D control features. And if you see the red, you can double click that tooth and then you can intrude it. Okay, and we will see that. We can see that the superimposition feature will change with the occlusal heat map. Okay, so this is very helpful when you're moving teeth um, to make sure that you don't want to have any interferences or any heavy or moderate occlusal knocks during your treatment plan. Okay, so this is the 3D control features. Um, I would just like to pause and see if we have any questions. I'm looking at the chat box and no one has asked anything as of yet. Um, would anyone like to know anything about what I've shown just now for Clear Pilot 5.0? Uh, B, do you want to maybe ask the group? ค่ะสําหรับตัวเคลียร์ไพลอตนะคะที่เราลองใช้ <coughs> สามารถเปิดไมค์หรือว่าพิมพ์ผ่านเข้ามาในแชทบอกได้ค่ะเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเอ่อเ
change. You can change to see like version two, version three, version four. Can rectangular attachments be beveled? Yes, but we normally have the bevel towards the um, edge of the aligner. So it's more easy to insert and remove. But if you want the beveled edge to be placed the other way, you can type a note to the technician. ขออนุญาตเสริมคำถามของอาจารย์นิตานะคะตอนที่กดตรงดูในแต่ละแต่ละเวอร์ชันนะคะ Rachel could you please um turn back to the yes to, to mess it up please uh, I would like to uh, elaborate to Dr. นิตาอาจารย์คะถ้าเกิดอาจารย์กดตรง viewing viewing version ใช่ไหมคะสมมติอาจารย์มีหมด5เวอร์ชันนะคะมันจะ pop up ขึ้นมาให้ให้ดูเลยเวอร์ชัน1 2 3 4อาจารย์สามารถดูได้ว่าชีวิตเมนเซนท์ที่ส่งมาแต่ละเวอร์ชันเนี่ยหน้าตาเป็นยังไงนะคะหลังจากนั้นเนี่ยตรงที่เป็นคุณดรริชาคุณคุณยูพลีสคลิกออนเดอคอมเมนต์เดอะคอมเมนต์อะไรเดอะคอมเมนต์เมนูอย่าค่ะถ้าเกิดมันมีหลายเวอร์ชันใช่ไหมคะคุณหมอสามารถสกรอลดาวลงไปนะคะแต่ละเวอร์ชันที่คุณหมอแอดคอมเมนต์ไปค่ะมันก็จะขึ้นมาทั้งหมด history ทั้งหมดก็จะขึ้นมาตรงนี้นะคะค่ะประมาณนี้ค่ะโอเคโอเค is there other question yes maybe one yeah from the time in is it possible to place attachment button on the same two yes you can you can definitely do that or more than one attachment on the same two yes you can No problems with that. Okay, so um, please keep asking questions, and I can come back to it. No problems. Let's look at the doctor portal now. So if we are here, and then we want to update our clinical preferences, I highly advise all of the doctors to do this. Um, what we do is we go to the top right hand side of the page. We click on the triangle to drop down, and then we click My Account. And under My Account, we have all of the information that you have submitted when you first created the account. So we have information like personal information, the practice that you work at, your password, phone number, email notifications for when your treatment setups are ready. If you have a trios, you can pair your trios. Or if you have um, a better vivo, you can also pair collaborator. And I would like to now show you the treatment preferences. So you can also click this here, preferences. And it just takes about five minutes to complete. I will just run through all of the different options for you. So the first option is the movement velocity. So our standard movement with Click Correct is. For each aligner, the teeth will move 0.3 millimeters per aligner in an anterior posterior direction. We will also have 0.3 millimeters of intrusion or extrusion per aligner and three degrees of rotation every aligner step. But if this is too fast for you, you can ask the lab to reduce it. And if you click this reduced option, it will be 0.2 millimeters in an anterior posterior direction. 0.2 millimeters of intrusion and extrusion and two degrees of rotation per aligner step. But if you want something different, you can um, customize it. So simply click this, and then you will need to add, um, type in your instructions uh, right at the bottom in the notes section. Okay. Um, the wear schedule, our clear correct recommended wear schedule is two weeks, but if you would like that to be changed to one week, 10 days, Or three weeks, you can simply change that here. IPR timing, IPR we do with Click Correct on odd steps. So step number one, three, five, seven, nine, and so forth. So if you like to do it right at the very beginning, you can do step number one. Otherwise, it can be step number three. No IPR at all. So you never want the technician to do IPR. Or if you have a specific step, like you like it to be done at step number seven or step number nine, click this one, and then you type it in the additional instructions. But our default with Click Correct is just to do it when is necessary. So the technician will have a look at the setup and see when is most appropriate for you to do the IPR. 
IPR maximum, our default with ClearCorrect is we will do a maximum of 0.3 millimeters on an anterior tooth and 0.6 millimeters on a posterior tooth. You can change that to 0.6 on all teeth, but it's a lot. I recommend you keep it at 0.3 for the anterior teeth. If you have something else you prefer, you can just do it in the um, additional comments. Anterior talk, um, you can change that to having contact or without contact during the talking phase. And the posterior talk, excuse me, the posterior talk will have different options. It will be only minimal if you just want to um, really not change much to the posterior teeth. Um, otherwise, we can have um, the uprighting of the posterior teeth and slight negative talk of the posteriors and the lower arch or we can upright the lower posterior teeth and do a slight positive um, talk in the upper arch. But um, if you're not doing very difficult cases, you might want to keep it at minimal change only just to maintain the occlusion to make it a more simple outcome for you. Expansion, so expansion, um, we do as a default, we extend between the canines to the sixes, and we also do some anterior protrusion. We don't, um, as a default, extend the sevens and the eights. And we do a maximum of two millimeters per quadrant. If you would like to do more expansion, you can go up to three millimeters. Otherwise, if you have some other preference, maybe like maximum of 1.5, you can just do the custom instructions and type it in the additional comments below. Class two correction, um, our default with click correct is to do sequential distalization as we know it's very predictable movement with aligners. Um, otherwise, if you don't do difficult cases and you just want to keep the um, anterior posterior segment um, maintained, you can just do no class two correction. So it'll be no molar changes. Um, otherwise you can have a customized instruction. If you have some type of staging that you like to do for your sequential, for every case, you can type it down the bottom. Smile arc, so our technicians will do the best to look at the photographs of the patient that you provide, and they will try to design a smile that works um, best with the new proposed setup for the digital planning. Um, and they will base that on the, the photograph of the patient smiling that you provide. But if you don't want them to do that, you can just simply ask for them to align and level following the occlusion without the lip guidance. For occlusion, um, generally we try to maintain three contacts per quadrant in the posterior segment without any anterior contacts. If you prefer, we can also have some very light anterior contacts or we can do very heavy contacts in the posterior with no anterior contacts. Or if there's something else you like, you can simply select this and we can um, customize it according to your preference. Curve of speed, so um, the default is that we idealize it. So we try and correct the curve of speed by doing tipping, intrusion, and extrusion when necessary. But if you don't want the technicians to adjust the curve of speed, you can just click this one and they will not alter the curve of speed. They'll just do alignment and try to improve where possible. Virtual C chain, so virtual C chain is when You've done some um, IPR or there's been some spacing and you want to make sure that you have tight contacts when you finish so they can add in some additional aligners. Um, you can just have it so that it's only provided when you ask for it. Otherwise, you can have it on all cases or um, just on some cases when the technician will um, advise to have the attachments removed. So you can also remove the engages and then issue the C-chain aligners. First molars, so if you're not doing difficult cases, you can click do not move first molars, otherwise the technician will try to improve the relationship. And the same for the sevens and the eights, so the seconds and third molars. Over jet and over bite, so what we try to do is somehow fit it within the range of 1.5 to 2.5, over jet and over bite. But if you prefer to have somewhere between two to three, you can um, select this one instead. <coughs> Excuse me. Crowding preferences. So if you have mild to moderate cases, um, the technician will expand the canines and the premolar region. They'll do IPR and they'll apply anterior protrusion. Otherwise, um, they will extend the canines 
the premolars and the molars as well, they will do IPR, but they won't do any anterior protrusion. When what it choose to be a crowding, our default is that we expand the canines and the molars and the premolars, and we distalize up to one to two millimeters, but we don't distalize the eights, the upper eights. If you want them to be moved, just let the technician know. Otherwise, we won't distalize those. We do IPR and we place a little bit of anterior round tripping. We have some other options. It's a lot of text. Um, we have an option where we do IPR, but we don't round trip. And then we have an option where we do distalization, expansion of canines and premolars, and we do a little bit of So have a think about that and what your preference is in your clinic. Engages, so um, some doctors, they are fine doing engages, others, they don't want to do any engages at all. Just remember that if you don't do engages and you have difficult movements, it becomes challenging for the plastic alone to move the teeth. I recommend that you um, use engages where possible for rotations, intrusions, and extrusions. It will make the treatment plan much more predictable for your patient. Engager timing, um, you can place at step number three and keep it right until the end of the treatment. You can only do it uh, when requested um, at a specific step, or you can do it at step one and keep it on for the whole treatment plan. It completely depends on what works for you and your clinic workflow. So you can also click use custom instructions and you can type that. Engage your size. Um, I recommend if you're treating adult patients, try and keep the engages quite big. It helps with the movements a lot. So you can ask for four millimeters. And bite ramps, we have bite ramps now with clear pilot since the last version. So what we can have is different preferences. So we can have bite ramps on the incisors, central and lateral incisors. We can have bite ramps on the canine to canine, um, or we can have um, bite ramps just on the canines when we just need to intrude the lower incisors. So decide what works best for you and your patient. And then the cutout shapes, our um, default is that we have cutouts on the upper and uh, buttons on the lower when we're doing a class two distalization um, and the opposite for class three. And then here in additional treatment preference notes, this is where you will type some extra instructions if there's anything else that hasn't been covered. So you might like to say, um, I recommend you just number them like this. You might say, um, never perform, this is an example, <laughs> never perform round tripping, um, always add four millimeter horizontal engages on sixes, upper and lower, um, finish with two millimeter over depth and over bite, and maybe also um, you might want to talk a little bit about the timing for the IPR. IPR should always be performed at step number. This is just an example if this is how it works in your clinic. You always want to see the patient for IPR at step number nine. And if you want to do engages, maybe engages should always be bonded at step number five. That's an example as well. I've just made all of this up. So let's pretend that's what I like to do. And then you can press save. And all of this will save. And then the technicians, every time that you submit a case, they will look at this. Uh, but if you do an individual case and you do a prescription form, that prescription form, if you ask for something different to what's on here, the prescription form always overrides this. So the prescription form has priority and then the clinical preferences. And once it's saved, um, the technicians can access all of this in the back end and they will help you do a more predictable treatment plan for you according to your likes and needs in your practice. Great, so let's see, I think we have some questions. Bye, Dr. Tanan. <laughs> um, Okay. Do you have the cutout acted like a hook? Yes, that's the double slit. I will show you here on the case. So we can um, go back to Dr. Edit. 
Yes. And then we can um, click on this, the button, and we can remove this. And then if we want to add the double slit, um, we can click add cutout here. Apologies. <laughs> add cutout. Click the tooth and then we click the slit. And now you can see that we have the slit here and it's a double hook where the elastic will run through the cutout. Um, so it'll be on the aligner. And then if you want to move the position, um, you can just click on it and you can um, either choose to have it on the buckle or the lingual, but I recommend to always have it on the buckle uh, when you're doing like a class two or class three type movement. Um, and are all the button cutouts available for all anteriors and incisors and posterior? Yes. So let's say that you are intruding this um, two one here and you want to add a button because you think you might need to run a tad as an instance, you can click add cutout, you can add a button and here's the button and just say you want to have it up here and maybe you want to remove the engager instead, you can um, customize it like that. Can we compare before and after in one screen? What we can do is we can look at um, let me turn this off. We can look at move this a little bit. We can click on treatment overview to remove this. We can click on multi view. And what we can see here is we can see different views here. But actually, we can't compare like the before on one screen and the after on another, but we have different ways of viewing it. I hope that makes sense. Can we place attachments on the occlusal surface? Yes, you can. You can definitely do that. Is slit double, is split on the double slit, not single slit? Yes, it's a double slit and it's at like a 45 degree angle. So it'll run the elastic 45 degrees upper to lower. So here, if we look, you can see this is where the split is. I hope that answers your question. Please type any other questions that you might have. These are all very great. And B, anything from your side that you have gathered? Yeah, we don't have it. That's all good from my side. Okay, how to place the uh, occlusal engager, okay. Can we add the bite run in the posterior? Yes, post I can see that as well. Yeah, at, at the posterior. Not yet, we have the posterior bite ramp coming next year, which will be very nice. Um, so I will just show you this feature, turn this off. And then we can click on look to edit. So here we can see that we have the bite ramp. Uh, actually, these are engages. Someone has put a lot of engages on the teeth. So I will show you the anterior bite ramp. A lot of people like to play with this case. So it's looking really crazy right now. So let me remove this. Uh, we can add the bite ramp by clicking add bite ramp. And then you can see that we have different options. We can have um, all of the four um, incisors, so the lateral and the central, we can have canine to canine or we can have canines only. Okay. So here is an example where we can see that the bite ramp has now been added. I'll just rotate this around so we can see when we hover over it, we're seeing the indication to show that it's a bite ramp. I hope that makes sense. And then if we look at the lower arch and we want to add an engager, um, actually at this point in time, what I have been doing, if I want to add it on the, on the occlusal surface is I have been typing because I find that it's more predictable. I will write add um, 
four millimeter horizontal engage it to a clusal surface of lower sevens and sixes. I would, I would simply type that because I find that it's easier for the technician to understand. So they don't think I've made a mistake by putting it on the occlusal surface because when we have the posterior bite ramps coming next year, it'll be very easy for the technician to understand that you want to open the posterior bite. Yeah. So I recommend you type it in the comments. Okay. Okay, so I will send you some information about the bite ramp so that you have all of the sizes. Um, and it depends. Um, the bite ramp will stay for the whole treatment plan. Um, so basically, as the um, as the overjet and the overbite changes, it won't change size. So it's static throughout the whole treatment. It remains the same size. But next year we'll have an update where when the overjet changes, the bite ramp will become smaller and smaller and then it will dissolve. So this is a feature to look forward to in the next update next year. And the sizing, we will send that information out to you so that you have the exact sizing of the bite ramps. A lot of very nice questions. For the slit, can we modify the orientation? No, it's always at the 45 degree angle. Yeah. The testing was done to make sure that this is the most efficient way of the bite um, remaining and the aligner not flaring too much with the um, 45 degree angle. I think you see the, the question that uh, please show how to place Alcuso and Gizzer. Yes, um, we typed to the technician. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Does everything make sense about the clinical protocols as well? จะเป็นฝั่งของเครือประวัติอ่าถ้าจะศูนย์ก็ได้นะคะหรือว่าจะเป็นตัวเพอร์เฟอร์เรนซ์อ่ากําลังจะบอกว่าถ้าการเซต
าร์ดอีเวนต์ในครั้งนี้ด้วยนะคะเพื่อเราจะได้นำไปปรับปรุงครั้งถัดไปค่ะสวัสดีค่ะ